Okay. Uh, finally, uh, that's my old inner skin. And uh, finally got the new inner skin. Looks really good. We're just putting two, uh, two sheet metal screws into the new transom here. To hold it, we're going to go uh, put it in the boat and see how everything looks. And uh, just doing a trial run right now. But uh, And that is a thicker piece of aluminum than the original. The original, uh, this is a, definitely a heavier gauge, a lot more rigid, but um, still have to drill all the holes though. So, like I said, we're just uh, screwing it to it right now, and we're going to try to fitment now. Okay, we used some rubber mallets and tapped it in. This this thing we had to move around, you know, it's a pretty tight fit. Like I said, we went thicker than original. So, but uh, we got her where the scrubber holes are lined up real nice. So, cool. We just put the transom cap over it, and even with this thicker, uh, with the heavier duty aluminum, um, the heavier gauge, it still uh, fits under there with plenty of room because the new transom's thinner than the original. So. So definitely, uh, definitely pleased. I'm really excited. Roy boys telling me a bunch of bad things. I, I'm too excited. <laughs> okay, uh, made a new purchase to help me with my project. Uh, ran to Menards and grabbed this one of these drill mate deals, and using quarter inch drills. And right now I'm just going across uh, on the, uh, the original holes. Using this to get it uh, nice and straight and going through. Um, and it, it gets a nice straight hole. Um, the other side, some of them aren't perfect, you know, uh, because you got these brackets on this side. And some of them are not exactly dead on. And even this brace, we intentionally moved this over, this, this backing brace. We intentionally moved it over so we're drilling brand new holes into the aluminum. So you can tell uh, when they assembled this boat that they were doing the same thing. They just uh, put the bracket on and drilled. But like I said, uh, right now uh, these are just temporary in there. I'm not using the nylon uh, nuts on the back. I'm just, we're getting them uh, snug, keep everything uh, tight. And I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna remove them, and I'm gonna sand this boat down even better. When I'm uh, once the transom in here, I'm gonna sand all these all the spots a little better, so the the bolts are coming back out. Right now, I'm just using, uh, like I said, the non-nylon nuts. Just these uh, quarter twenties uh, nuts. I am using my good my. My good screws though, and then uh, these are just temporary. And when I do it for the final run, I'm gonna put on the nylon lock nuts. And like I said, some of the holes aren't perfect. Where I uh, hit the, oogled out the hole on the other side on the brace. So those ones I'm gonna use washers. And uh, anyway, that's that's how it's going. And then this motor plate here still has to get drilled out. I'll just put the original on on here and still drill out the motor plate luckily the motor plate doesn't go under the lip it just goes up to it and then even this lip uh there's i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to squeeze this a little better because uh there's still a little room yet so we're gonna have to adjust the cap so it holds it nice and tight under there so it's a long way to go. I mean, but at least it, I'm making progress now. I'm on the right track. We're we're moving forward. Okay, uh, made a lot of progress today. Uh, definitely did a, got some work done. Got the uh, splash wells just setting here right now, but uh, got all the holes drilled, even the uh, inch and three quarter, or inch and seven eighths, I believe. Oh, it was.
inch and seven eighths. So, um, you know, I bought the, the transom had the hole, but I had to drill through the, through the inner, inner, um, skin. So, and I even drilled all my uh, motor holes. I had it all bolted together, uh, just finger tight. Everything was finger tight. Now I took them all off and have been sanding. Been sanding uh, everything smooth, getting ready for a paint. Uh, I see a couple cracks. I'm going to have to get welded up. Probably tomorrow we'll weld. There's a little crack there. And this corner, this corner's uh, cracked. The original, uh, the welds are cracked. Uh, this side's not so bad, but uh, this side, like I said I had cracked there, cracked in that corner. So, a um, little more welding to do, but uh, it, coming together, starting to look like a boat again. Okay, uh, one of the um, one of the upgrades I did to my boat was uh, put a new steering mechanism in. Um, my, our, my boat has a tilt steering uh, tilt steering wheel. But over the years from, uh, you know, salmon fishing on Lake Michigan and the pounding I was taking, uh, the steering was real loose and wobbly. Well, Great Lake Skipper has the replacement. It was a bolt-in replacement that goes, uh, the, the whole mechanism right here. And now it's nice and tight. So, because, um, yeah, it, it was really freaking, it was really wobbly. So, but now it's not. So that's another improvement I made was that. Um, I also even purchased a little diesel heater for uh, for when I fish early season when it's really cold out. Um, that's another upgrade. So I got all kinds of upgrades going on. The diesel heater I'm going to keep portable. Anyway, that's some upgrades. I'm going to keep working on the transom. Okay, long way to go. It's been day three of the assembly. I've been uh, well. I assembled it, then I took it all apart. You know, uh, the first assembly was to uh, get all the holes uh, lined up and and fitted. And um, I got these brackets aren't the exact brackets. These aren't the ones that came off, so I had to actually put uh, new ones on. And right from the factory, it looked like they they were like hand drilled. You know, not they weren't square. So I used four holes that were there and drilled a couple extra but like i said they're not square i actually put nut uh threads on the insides on these sides uh because once i foam this you won't have access i don't have access to this side so i actually i'm going to make it where uh, these are uh on this side is going to be nuts um those kind of uh, you crimp in crimp in hold on i'll show you the tool yeah this is uh the tool for those uh, those threaded nut inserts, you know, you kind of use it like a pop riveter. Although they don't pop, you know, they, nothing pops. You just squeeze it, and it and it crushes the little um, little inserts right here. These little guys. So that's all it is. It, uh, and I did uh, red Loctite them in place also just i don't want them to spin at all obviously because if they spin i'm screwed and plus i countersunk them down in there and uh and then red lock tighten them no i've been spraying zinc or uh actually um self-etching primer because uh, i'm assembling right now all the uh, screws um Obviously, my motor ones; are, these are just temporary. But uh, but these are going in permanent now, and I am putting I am putting some sealant on them. Anyway, motor plates. Uh, this is a nice motor plate head cut out, and uh, the inner skin is looking great. I worked on the splash well; got all that all that's all ready to rock and roll. My friend Todd came over and we welded, uh, there was a couple cracks on it, and we welded up the cracks, and so everything's getting, coming together. Like I said, it's day three for me. It's almost uh, two o'clock in the morning again. I'm going to finish her up. I got like ten more screws to put in, um, and that'll be it for tonight. Okay, today I'm getting 
I'm getting ready to do the foaming at my diesel heater. I'm going to warm up this whole area because it said uh, 80 degrees you'll get the most out of your foam. And I got a lot of areas to fill with the foam. I'm just going to do little batches at first then uh, get it close and put in the put in the wash pan. So now I did run some drainage tunnel. I ran some conduit down along the edge. I'm not sure if you can see that. But I used, uh, put it all along the bottom edge. And it comes out right here. Right here. And um, my idea, you know, I'm not an expert. I'm just winging this. But if my gut tells me that's it'll work. And it just has an extra drainage for along the along the edge and I, I set it up with some uh, t-rex tape so the foam won't get in it i'm hoping that uh it'll have a little extra drainage to come to the bilge like when you if you put holes in for uh, transducers and stuff that's my goal all it is is some uh some of this stuff so hopefully uh Hopefully that works. You know, I'm not sure. I'm just, I think it'll work. But, you know, if it doesn't, uh, I don't, I'm not out too much materials. And I don't think a little bit of uh, duct tape in my, you know, getting foamed in is going to hurt. So, all right, that's where we're at. Um, getting set up for my foaming. I got expanding uh, two pound density foam I got my leather gloves I got stir sticks I got for little batches I got little uh, shot cups I got some uh, from the dollar store some uh, mixing containers and a bunch of because once you once you use this I was watching on YouTube once you use this stuff you gotta the sticks gonna be thrown away the cups gonna get thrown away so I'm just getting all set up with uh, everything I need here garbage gloves stir sticks my foam um, I'm prepping the area I'm going to heat it up like I said I'm going to do really small batches at first to see what it does and even make a, a push plate to hold it down if it gets out of control so that's where I'm at okay this part's been really fun actually been uh, it's like Mr. Wizard's World This is uh, I just been doing little shot glasses. Take it's 50-50 mix. So you, I just go up to the line on the shot glass with the one part, part one. Go up to the line with the shot glass, part two. Make sure they're even. They are. Take my cup. dump them together you get like 30 seconds to mix them grab my little mixer yeah this stuff this stuff's pretty neat what is it expanding pour foam from fiber fiberglass supply depot Mix them for like over 20 seconds here. It gets hot. You can feel it, it builds up a little temperature. And I did warm this whole area up with my diesel heater. And I'm gonna try to get in here and show you what I'm doing. I already poured some. Careful not to get this stuff on you. Watch. Oh yeah, here it comes.
Okay, that's the last one I'm going to do in this in this side compartment because I got to put in my mount for my talon yet. I don't want it to get too high. Okay, like I said it's kind of fun. It's a fun part doing little experiments with the uh, foam. You're not supposed to get this on you, so wear your gloves. And uh, you know, I got it coming creeping out there. I did block off that conduit. This conduit uh, actually has all my wiring, so I'm not ready to do the pockets yet. But anyway, that's what she looks like. It's pretty neat. Okay, I got to give a shout out to the boys at uh, the Shano Paper Mill that supply NFN Adventure Team. They're it's paper products. These uh, are awesome. We make shop rags out of their uh, their leftover rolls that they can't recycle. And the boys, my buddies, uh, let me. They gave me a couple rolls. So big shout out to uh, Ben and uh, Wally, Cody, all you boys that uh, give me paper rolls. Okay, here's the update. Um, I did get a little high right here on that little lump, but everything else is fitting in there pretty nice. So I might have to shave that. If I do have to shave it, I'm going to have to seal it up because you don't want to open up that uh, closed cell. It's better to let it get hard. Uh, one tip I found was uh, if I break my uh, sticks in half, I get a better mix. Um, because what else happened is you got that groove down in the bottom of the cup. If you break your stick in half, you actually uh, get a better mix job. And my foam looks a lot better. Because earlier I had some pretty big uh, celled foam where uh, most likely I was not getting a good mix. Now I'm getting some really good looking foam. So, uh, and I think it's because of that. I think it's because of that uh, stir stick is getting better. So anyway, that's the update. And they're nice and warm, so I get full use of my foam. I did go through, I'm on my gallon jugs. I already used up uh, my two liters. So I, I started on my gallons now. Looks like I'll have plenty with those gallon. Uh, I probably should have just went with a gallon first. For my boat, the, uh, all the foam I had out, I probably should have just went with the two gallons. I would have had enough to do my whole boat. Um, I bought the two liters first, and that would not have been enough. So, if you if you pull out all the foam like I did, where I had it all yanked out, in order to replace it, you're going to need uh, the two gallons, two gallon jugs. Hey, okay, didn't get a whole lot done today. I went fishing with brother-in-law. For a little while so anyway uh did uh get the one of the talons on and fitted uh did have to use uh, a spacer plate to get it out far enough and like on this side i uh drilled an access hole here so i had to do a like a four and a half inch hole saw hole I had to go real careful because man drilling that big a hole with a uh with a power drill or whatever she really likes to bite so it took my time you can see all the shavings and everything but uh anyway that's in so um getting close getting closer still gotta uh mount the final touches on uh the braces yet and if you're doing this uh we did put big uh aluminum backers in a big sandwich and we put the uh the backer plate far enough so It'll also cover. It'll also cover uh, the hole. Like uh, the backer plate is definitely going to be through here, and we're still going to come out here yet. Okay, I added uh, silicone on both sides of the skins around the edges, and then put the cap on. I just screwed the cap straight in uh, with the screws using 
number 10 inch and a half sheet metal screws and I uh, got that all on there um, getting ready to uh, put the the wash basin in I did put uh, there's two way tape right here put that along and uh, that gives a little bit of a fill along the edge so that's what's going on right now um, I did slide the boards back in the, in here uh, before we can put the top down rivets uh, we got some uh, rivets I want to show you this is what we're using for rivets you know for the ones that we buck got quarter by half ABR and then uh, this these are the main ones I'm going to be using for uh, like putting a wash deck down the wa a splash well um, these are HKMG LP B8-6 these are hook alternative rivets these are pretty strong really strong and they're uh, sealed you know when when they crush they don't leave a they don't leave a hole for water to go through so that's what they look like mega lock aluminum quarter inch by 3 eighths Huck alternative. These rivets were purchased at North Central Utility in Wisconsin Rapids, Wisconsin. Okay, uh, for these, we're, we're bucking the rivets. These are the bucked rivets. We we'll use a big bucking tool, and Roy just put one of them rivets in there like that. And all we do is get the bucking tool in there. This is a bad example one. Okay, and then I just tell him, okay, I'm ready, and he hammers it. And all I did is push this heavy weight against that, and it, like, doubles the size of the rivet butt. Okay, uh, Roy has this handy-dandy Milwaukee riveter. I'll wind up vacuuming all this stuff up here, and I'm going to wind up cutting off the end of these bolts nice and flush. But we'll show you, um, we, these are quarter inch rivets, so we had to drill them out. We actually drilled them out uh, 1764ths. And for fitment, I did uh, put in my scrubber holes when I put this pan in. Uh, just to one side, just to make sure everything was in place when I did all the bracing and stuff. Ready? Okay. We're filming. That's all she goes. That simple. Here goes another one. Okay, cool. We do put a little bit of silicone under them anyway. So, not sure if that's right, but we've been silicone and everything. Okay, on my boat, um, we did add some uh, little aluminum shim. We added a aluminum shim here in between the cap and these walls. It's just a sixteenth piece of aluminum. Then I have the bigger aluminum for the talon bracket. The big, the big thick sheet goes all the way down and goes on the back side. But we did have to add that little. There's a there's a little sixteenth piece of aluminum, sixteenth thick. It's three quarter inch across, and we used the uh, six and a half inch length, and that was the shim from up up here to right there, because there wasn't uh, there was a gap, so we did do a little shimming. These are extra like I, these are extra screws um, that we added because it's mainly because of the talon. Uh, pressures that we're going to put on here and plus uh, when I mentioned in my first video that there were stripped out screws they were the, one, the ones that were stripped out were on the back side of this piece of angle and all of them were stripped out because there was a gap there so we put in that shim piece of 16th inch aluminum we added that shim to, to make this a really nice uh, gap and then we added the screws to strengthen the whole works up so everything will be 
really strong here once the talons are on. I have an update. I did uh, get the transom painted. Um, it was professionally done. I had it done. Uh, my buddy Cole Yock owns Yock Sales in Ringo, Wisconsin. Um, he uh, They do automotive. Uh, plus, you can order uh, like Garmin stuff. And uh, they, they're a dealer for like Raven uh, bows, like if you're into uh, crossbows and stuff. Anyway, check out my buddy uh, Cole Yock and Yock Sales in Ringo, Wisconsin. Um, automotive and sporting goods. Um, like I said, he'll order in anything for like Garmin, he, uh, talons, stuff like that. Uh, he deals with a little bit of everything. But anyway, uh, they did uh, the painting on my on my transom. Just got it back today. Looks uh, pretty slick. They uh, they actually paint matched. They had the um, CarQuest guy, I guess, uh, paint match it, or they used a, something about CarQuest where they they shined up a spot on the side of my boat over here. My boat's pretty dirty, but uh, they shined it up, did a paint match, and um, they used like automotive paint, but then a marine clear coat. So um, I did uh, I did get it professionally done. I didn't do it myself. And what else? Oh, I'm starting to install uh, all the hardware or uh, this kind of stuff again putting all that back on I've been uh, putting new new stuff where I can like this uh, those are through haul strainer mounts and uh, I, I got both uh, both sides the inside and out um, also I'm using the cable the I like my plug being on the outside of the boat so you don't have to undo that cap to get at it so Got a couple of these guys, and it's screwed in, so when I pull the plug, you don't lose your your plug. And I did get those at uh, M&J Marine, up by, uh, near Wausau, and uh, they're not too bad. Uh, they're actually, uh, I think they were like $6 a piece, so not too too bad. And if you don't uh, have Marina by you, a Marine uh, outlet, or store uh, you can get these I saw them uh, you can get them at, them at Great Lakes Skipper online so that's a place where you can get those very very nice so anyway just uh, reassembling going to town um, I did have it painted without that in there so they did they were able to paint the sides had to undo everything but now I got to put everything together so that's where I'm at. Everything's going together real good. I'm pretty happy. I did not have them buff it, buff it out um, after they clear. They wanted to buff it, and I was like, oh, no, because I don't want them to buff the, the clear coating off the bolts. So um, that's how it goes, and you know, everything turned out really good. I'm pretty happy. A so, couple so. quick tips. Uh, if you're doing for uh, this plastic hardware, it was uh, one and a quarter socket deep well gets uh, for the back nut and I was able to uh, I just you know I put on um, I put silicone on there on on the fittings and then I hand uh, I got them hand tight uh, and a pretty good torque on it just by hand because it's plastic and then like I said they are siliconed in place so just make sure you got yourself a deep well inch and a quarter or or you can use a wrench whatever but it's inch and a quarter the plastic nut on the back of those fittings okay been uh, putting some weather stripping down around the old live well and getting ready uh, I'm doing my wash down system Roy actually had a really nice brass bulkhead connector here I had to drill my hole a little bigger for that brass bulkhead connector. But um, this is going to be my my uh, my storage for my hose. I'm going to plug this hole so it doesn't drop water into my new storage. So it doesn't drop water into here. 
even though I, I am gonna have these holes drain into the bilge if I do get water in there so um, anyway that's what's going on that's the latest update I did leave this side loose yet because when I put that old bait well in I have to lift up on this to get it to fit so I did not rivet this yet that's it's gonna be put this back together and then lift this up put the bait well in put it back down and then start uh, buttoning up the top got the brackets in for the min for the min quotas for the uh, talons and that's where I'm at once I get her all buttoned up it'll be put the motors back on okay um, got the rivets in underneath underneath the, the black molding I'm putting in the molding right now one thing to remember do not forget this is don't do the inside you can do the outside but don't do the inside and, because you need to pull this up to get this in so that's your tip of the day when you rivet the outside first leave the inside all undone and we didn't do rivets on this side I used uh, stainless steel uh, screws um, it, ta it took a lot of stuff tapered tapered head I was putting all new stuff and not reusing the old so it, but it takes tapered head and it had I was using some sixes here I went to size 10 for here so lots of lots of different stuff um, as far as screws and nuts um, but anyway the main thing is when you do these rivets Do not do the inside until this side's all done, and you get you get your uh, bait well in. And same on this side. This side we did the same thing. We did the outside. I haven't done the inside yet. And to get these rivets, to get these end ones here, I had to go all the way across. And these are my bucking tools. This piece of stainless. This is what I used. Uh, and, and my brother-in-law, he used the air gun, and I used this bucking tool, but for, for in the way back here, we had to pull this side up and use a big piece of rod. So those are the two bucking tools for the, uh, this is a size, see. these are the size rivets we used. Uh, I'm not exactly sure, but that's them. They, they actually, they're pretty soft, so they uh, pretty simple. You don't need much. Quick hammer on the hammer drill with this on it, and it was, it was uh, really quick. Okay, and I had to use the smallest uh, head for the little rivets. See, I got multiple rivet sizes, uh, heads, and this is the air tool we used. And uh, it fit right in there, and it was a two-person job, though, to do it nice. And uh, they crush really quick and easy. So, all right, that's the update. Things are coming together pretty good. Bait well's in. All plumbed in. I got my washer. Everything's coming together good. Okay, a lot of guys... Uh talk about how hard it is to get this uh, this bump rail back in um, it's going in pretty good it's pretty hot out today though it's uh, probably 80 degrees 75 75 degrees in the shop today and this tool works pretty good I just put it in there and I tilt it forward and push tilt it forward and push and that that works pretty good let me see if I can get the light on it you know I just put it in there tilt forward push tilt forward and push and then uh, then I come back with a, a mallet once once I get in there I come back and tap it and you got to pull on it now and then make sure it's not bound up but it's going together well and I do have a heat gun I can soften it up I haven't even tried this yet I'll try heating that up I heard if you use hot water, I, I read that if you use hot water, soak it in hot water, it goes really good. I haven't tried that yet. 
because it's been going together I put on a couple feet in a couple minutes so I said uh, this tool right here is uh, it's been working well it's a little go a lot easier it's a little bit of heat warmer up and this uh, little hook tool this one you put in there and you tilt it a little bit and then you just pull and it, and it slides right in there you know and, and I have the I have it already in on the bottom and I just put this in there I tilt it to the right and I pull and uh, it takes some muscle but it, it goes in really quick and easy or, and then you just hammer it and then it's in so that's that's the best way I found so far I'll update you if I find a better way okay big motor is on still have a lot to do as far as buttoning things up yet but that was a big step silicone everything up real good with uh, that 5200 3m 5200 so getting close okay just finishing up uh, tidying up the motors so uh, I got my end caps on they're not perfect but it's the only thing available those uh, 3d printed ones from Colby manufacturing like I said uh, they're not they're not as nice as originals but they're uh, like I said there's nothing else out there so uh, but there she is Uh, I just got a little more buttoning up to do up front and then uh, putting on my second talon here. I got to pair the two together. Oh, I also put um, put a little light on top of my talon and I jumpered it. I'm going to be jumpering it uh, into my regular lighting. So I, once, uh, once I hit the switch up there, it'll turn on my light on the talon all the time. or uh, So I won't have to put my pole in. I still can do my pull if I need to, but uh, it's going to be, if I leave this talon on all the time, which I, I, I do plan on using this, leaving this one on all the time, and this one I might take on and off for salmon fishing. But anyway, just uh, today's the day. I think I'm going to wind up uh, firing up the motors today. I got I to gotta run my oil pump to re-oil the motor. Uh, I do have a... Um, the tool to turn on my oil pump so I don't have to put in braking mode. I do have a um, a Quicksilver scan tool that I, where I can turn on stuff. Okay, <laughs> just finished up. Got everything uh, cleaned up. Well, the motors, I still got to wash the motors, but, but I did uh, sponge bath the sides so it's actually kind of clean. So we're going to take her out back and fire off the motors. I did prime. Uh, the big motor, I have a, uh, a scan tool or whatever that I turned the primer on, let it cycle. So talons are all installed. Got my little light up there. So Got my little navigation light on top. So that's pretty slick. Um, the talons, if I uh, hit down, they're in sync. They work together. And these are 15 footers, so they go deep. You know, I can uh, anchor in about 13, 14 feet of water. And uh, anyway, pretty neat. All right, I'm excited. We're gonna go fire fire up the big motors uh, or boat motors and get them running. She had a she had a big pile of oil in there. And fuel took a. It was really smoky at a startup, but now she's idling nice. Sweet. Time to take her out. Everything's working good except for my spray pump. I gotta I gotta check something on my spray pump because it's not turning on. So, but the talons are working good. The transom's working good. The look. transom project is done and functional. Time to go fishing. Alright, that's it for this project. NFN out.